Hello everybody. Uh, our good friend Abigail decided to drop by today at my lunch class and although I really wasn't uh, very prepared with any particular sermon for Passover, uh, I figured I would share with you some of the thoughts that we were thinking about at our lunch class which related to the Manashtana. Uh, we're already thinking about Passover. We're in the second day of Nisan. We're less than two weeks away from the Seder. It's time to really start thinking about Passover. And of course, we start looking at the Haggadah and try to understand the, the message of the Haggadah. And one of the interesting things about the Haggadah is that there is this focus on asking questions at the beginning of the Seder. The Manishtana is a requirement, and as the, the Mishnah talks about it, it says, Kana ben Shoel, that the, the son asks the question right at the, the beginning of the Seder, right at the beginning of the telling of the story, and the Manishtana, of course, uh, as it's outlined, at least in the, in the Bavli, there are four different questions, uh, and uh, this is, is, is an obligation for us to do, uh, whether we have children there or we don't have children there, because as the Talmud actually elaborates on the Mishnah, the Talmud says that if you have a son, your son asks you, and if not, then the husband and the wife ask each other, and if not, you ask yourself, or if, uh, let's say, there's two people, two friends sitting together, they ask each other the Manashtana. The Manashtana is a, a part of the Seder, and in many ways, the influence or the, the reason why the Manashtana is so important is because, number one, there's an influence coming from the Bible that says that the entire Passover story is related but when ki yishalcha bincha, when your son asks the question. So one of the, the profound influences, one of the reasons why the Manashtana is here is because the, the, the Bible tells us that we'll be relating the Passover story when our son asks us the question. And because we want to, in a sense, recreate this particular biblical image of a son asking the father questions, the authors of the Haggadah and the Mishnah put the Manishtana at the very beginning of the Seder. Now, this idea of getting the children to ask questions is one that has a profound impact on the entire Seder. The reason why we put out the karpas where we dip the vegetable, is it to motivate the children to ask questions. Ask the child asking the question is something that's very significant and very important. And like I said, there's a biblical influence to this. The Bible tells us that the son will ask the question. But then we have to analyze for a moment, why is this? Why is the child's question so significant? And I think the answer really sort of works on, on two levels. One level is, is that it's an educational idea, that in many ways the best way to tell a story is to motivate the student to ask questions to begin with. If you can come into the situation where the student is already curious about what you're going to be teaching him or her, then you've done half the job. Half the job of education is getting the attention of the students, and half the job of education is ensuring that your students are curious. So you want the child to ask questions. You want the child to be engaged. And so we do all sorts of strange things to motivate the children to ask questions, and if they're not motivated by those strange behaviors on their own, then we actually give them a list of questions and say, ask. And on one level, that's, it's a point of, of educational philosophy how one should teach. How do you teach? You teach by getting the attention of your student. You teach by piquing the curiosity of your student. But I think there's also a, a, perhaps a further message to this idea, which is maybe a little bit more difficult. And that is, is that as much as the parent may want to tell the Passover story, the only way we'll be able to tell it is if we have students, if we have children, that want to hear the Passover story. You know, for many years, it was a mainstay of, of rabbis who would give sermons on Passover that there's a fifth son. Of course, the, this, this, the Passover Haggadah tells about the four sons, and there was a mainstay of, of, of rabbinic homiletics. There's a fifth son. Who is that? The one that doesn't even come to the Seder. 
And this is a profound insight because we have to recognize as an older generation that there are certain limitations. Not only do we need to want to give, but we have to pray that the next generation wants to receive. Now that's one aspect of the Manishtana and one set of influences. But the idea of asking questions as a mode of, of, of intellectual uh, uh, insight and a, and a, and a mode of, of, so to speak, speaking about ideas is one that, as many who write about the Seder talk about parallels between the Seder and the Greek Symposium, where questions were posed and then discussed. But in many ways, it's a mainstay of Jewish literature. The Talmud is based on questions. Sometimes you get the impression that the Talmud is asking the questions because it loves questions. And even if it already knows the answer, it wants to ask the question just to ask the question. There is a love for question asking that is so much a part of the Talmud and so much a part of that intellectual tradition. And the Manishtana is a reflection of that tradition. The Manishtana comes out of the Talmud. You can't tell a story without asking questions, without engaging it critically. And that's, that's, that's in many ways become part of our Jewish culture to this day. I mean, there, there's so many anecdotes that relate to it. There's the famous joke, of course, about the Jew whose non-Jewish friend berated him and said, why is it that Jews always answer a question with a question? Please tell me, why do you Jews always answer a question with a question? And his Jewish friend looked at him and said, why not? We, we love asking questions. You know, Izzet Arabi, who, is, who won the Nobel Prize in Physics, used to say that his mother was a, a, a profound influence on him because when he would come back from school, his mother didn't ask him how he did on his test. His mother asked him, did you ask a good question today, Izzy? That was the key point. And it's part of our ability to learn. We learn by asking questions. But there's another aspect to asking questions that's very critical as well. And I think this is really perhaps the most profound reason why the Manishtana is the kickoff to the Seder. Why do we start the Seder with the Manishtana? Why do we start with questions? And I think the answer has to do with what it means to have the mindset of freedom. There is a mindset of slavery and there's a mindset of freedom. A slave is willing to accept and to acquiesce to whatever is asked of him, even if it's unjust. The problem with the mindset of slavery is that there are many times that people can be enslaved and actually be accepting of their circumstances. A question is what changes it all. The ability to say, I don't understand this, is the first step on the road to freedom. Freedom is not possible without questioning injustice. And that's what we do at the Seder. We recognize that perhaps the most precious asset that we have, that we could take away from the Passover story, is our ability to ask questions. And even if we're living in the middle of exile, even if we're living in miserable circumstances, we know that if we can ask questions, if we can speak truth to power, if we can tell those who are perpetrating injustices, we don't accept them, we don't understand, then we will have inner freedom. And that's why we start the Seder with questions. Questions are what set us on the road to freedom. And that's why it's so beautiful that the Manishtana is the very beginning of the Seder because the Manishtana teaches us what freedom is all about. May everybody have a wonderful Seder filled with questions, filled with insights, even filled with answers. And may you be able to enjoy it together with your family and enjoy this holiday of freedom together. Chak Sameach. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Abigail. <laughs>